In this video, I'm going to show you some different solutions for grouping and counting objects in a dictionary in Python. The video is based on a blog post by Michael Buckley at the URL shown here. In our first example, we'll start with this list of names. And for the sake of the example, we'll use the built-in lane function to group the names by the number of characters in the name, giving us a dictionary that looks like this. The key is the number of characters in the name, and the value is the list of names that have that number of characters. And here is the code to accomplish this. After we define our list, we create an empty dictionary, D. Then we loop through the list of names. On each iteration, we set key to the length of the current name, and then use this if condition to check if that key is not yet in our dictionary. If it isn't, then we add it and set its value to an empty list. And finally, whether the key was freshly added or already existed, we append the name to the list that is the value for that key. So the first time through the loop, we are looking at mark, which has a length of 4. Since there is no 4 key in our dictionary, we add the key and assign an empty list. We then append mark to that list. So the list for our 4 key just contains the string mark. Second and third times through the loop, we do the same things for Henry and Matthew, which have lengths of 5 and 6. The fourth time through, we're looking at Paul, which has a length of 4. Because we already have a 4 key, we do not recreate it. Instead, we just append Paul to the existing list for the 4 key, which makes that list now mark Paul, and so on. Here it is in Python. At the end, I print the dictionary. We run it, and here's what the dictionary looks like. There are four names with four letters, one with five letters, two with six letters, and two with seven letters. Very nice. This works with any key. If we wanted, for example, to group by the first letter of each name, we could change the key to name zero. Now when we run it, we get this result. One name starts with J, one with R, three with M, and so on. So while this certainly does a job, Michael points out a downside. The key has to be hashed two or three times per iteration. First in the if statement, then possibly again in the assignment of the empty list, and then again when we append the value to the list. Michael provides two other methods for accomplishing the same thing. The first is to use the set default method of the dictionary. The set default method doesn't really set a default. Instead, it says if this key already exists, use its value, which in our case would be a list. Otherwise, use this value, an empty list. And then, whichever list it uses, we append the current name to that list. So it's doing the same thing we did up here, but the dictionary is doing the work itself. The third method Michael provides is to import default dict from the built-in collections module. A default dict is just a regular dictionary, except that when a lookup fails, it uses the argument passed to it during creation, in our case a list, as the value of that key. So in this step, if the key exists, it uses the value for that key. Otherwise, it assigns an empty list to that key and appends the name to that empty list. Okay, so that's grouping. Let's take a look at counting. Given a list like this, in which Mark and John each show up twice and Fred and Paul each show up once, we want to create a dictionary that shows that. And here's the code that does it. Let's consider what will happen the first time through this loop. D name plus equals one. Well, the first time through, we're looking at the string mark, and there is no mark key in D. But remember, default dict uses a default if it doesn't find the key. In this case, we have it using int. That means it will call int without passing any value to it. Let's do that ourselves and see what happens. It returns zero. Okay, so that means that the first time this is called, it will add one to zero, which is exactly what we want. The next time it finds the name mark, it will find the key and add 1 to 1. While that does the trick, Python provides an even easier way to do this. You can import counter from the collections module and pass counter the dictionary, like this. That gives you a counter object with the different counts. If you want to turn it into a dictionary, you can just pass it to dict, like this. You can add two counters together, like this. When we run this code, we can see that C is one counter containing both the boys and girls. Let's add a girl named Sue and as a tribute to Johnny Cash, a boy named Sue and run this again. You can see that it shows that there are two Sues in the result so it merges the results. Pretty neat. 
So that's the basics of grouping and counting in Python. Michael shows you a couple of additional things in his post, and he ends the post with a bonus challenge. If you're not already on his blog post, check it out at this URL. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks to Michael for letting us use his post as a basis for this video. Take care.